Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshu Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 6th of August. Rain battles several parts of western and southern Indian states. Flood situation looms large. Pakistan narrative on Jammu and Kashmir has lost him with UNSC member says India. And Nepal reinforces lockdown as COVID-19 cases surge. And now for all the details. Monsoon has left many regions in India struggling to cope as rain battered western Mumbai city has been waterlogged and day-to-day -day life in southern Kerala and Karnataka states have been affected due to heavy rains. Annual rainfall is essential in India as rains support two-thirds of the 1.3 billion population living in rural areas who rely on farming. But excessive rainfall cause problems like flood, landslide and waterborne diseases. Floods triggered by heavy rains in India's western Maharashtra state added to the woes of residents already bearing the brunt of coronavirus pandemic on Thursday. Rains in Mumbai have crippled normal life with the financial hub struggling with the monsoon rains as widespread construction and rubbish clogged trains and waterways make it increasingly vulnerable to flooding. Residents were seen wading through Thai high water to reach their destinations. Flood waters reached residential houses, breached roads and disrupted public transport. इधर हमेशा पानी ही रहता है बारिश में पर आने जाने में बहुत तकलीफ होती है इधर ऐसा पूरा इतना रहता है कभी खड्डा रहेगा तो आदमी को डर लगता है गिर जाने के लिए Meanwhile torrential rains have been lashing several parts of southern India particularly the states of Kerala and Karnataka a red alert has been issued for several districts of Kerala following the Indian Meteorological Department's prediction of extremely heavy rainfall in the state for the next 5 days annual rainfall is essential in India as rains support 2/3 of the 1.3 billion population living in rural areas who rely on farming but excessive rainfalls cause problems like floods landslide and waterborne diseases a massive fire broke out in covid-19 hospital in india's western city of ahmedabad early on thursday killing at least 8 people Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his condolences over the incident in his home state Gujarat. Chief Minister Vijay Rupani has ordered a probe into the incident. Eight COVID-19 patients died in a fire that broke out in the intensive care ward of a private hospital in India's western city of Ahmedabad early on Thursday. Police stopped angry relatives from entering the Shrey Hospital in the Gujarat state capital after the tragedy which according to emergency services was caused by a medical staff member's personal protective equipment catching a light. They died due to smoke and heat caused by the fire said media reports. Almost 40 people have been rescued and shifted to another hospital. लगभग 3:30 बजे इस हॉस्पिटल में जो आईसीसीयू का यूनिट है उसके अंदर शॉर्ट सर्किट के द्वारा एक आग लगी ये एक प्राथमिक कारण बताया जाता है और वो आग बुझाने का प्रयत्न वहां पर जो पैरामेडिक्स थे उन्होंने किया लेकिन वो आग बढ़ी और बहुत ही दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण तरीके से वहां जो आठ पेशेंट्स थे उनकी दुखद मृत्यु हुई है Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a tweet said he was saddened by the tragic hospital fire in his home state. An ex-gracier of 2.7 thousand US dollars from the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund has been announced to the kin of those who died in the accident. Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani who ordered a probe in the fire incident also announced an ex-gracier amount of 5.4 thousand US dollars each to the families of the victims. 
As of Thursday, Gujarat's COVID-19 tally reached 66,777. India on Wednesday slammed Pakistan's for its singularity unsuccessful attempt to broach the bilateral issue of Kashmir in the United Nations Security Council and said its narrative has lost steam and did not deserve the time and attention of the world body. India's permanent representative to the UN Ambassador T.S. Tirumurthy has said another attempt by Pakistan to internationalize the Kashmir issue has failed as a UN Security Council meeting convened by China to discuss the Kashmir matter ended without any outcome on Wednesday. Tirumurthy taking to Twitter on Wednesday said, in today's meeting of UNSC, which was closed, informal, not recorded and without any outcome, almost all countries underlined JNK was bilateral issue and did not deserve time and attention of the Council. Tirumurthy had earlier said that almost all countries at the meeting had agreed that Kashmir was a bilateral issue of India and Pakistan. Pakistan has been using various UN fora to raise the issue of Jammu and Kashmir ever since India passed the law in Parliament to strip the state of Jammu and Kashmir's special status under the Constitution and turn the state into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh last year. Pakistan escalated its campaign against the abrogation of Articles 370 and 35A and had persuaded China, a permanent member to the UNSC, to hold a meeting on Kashmir at the UNSC. India has categorically told the international community that the scrapping of Article 370 of the Constitution was its internal matter. Moving on. Local residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have always raised concern about the construction of dams and diversion of water of Neelam and Jhelum rivers that severely affected life and posed a serious environmental threat. They now express concern over contamination of drinking water and spiling of sewage as rubble and sewage are being disposed of in the river by the authorities. Huge amount of debris and sewage are being dumped into River Neelam that flows in the middle of Muzaffarabad city in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Neelam River enters Muzaffarabad from Chalabandi and it runs towards the west and joins Jhelum River in Dhamal. According to local residents, a large quantity of sewage disposal and rubble is being disposed of in Neelam River. They raised concerns over contaminated drinking water and spilling of sewage. <laughs> Residents for years highlighted concern that the so-called several development projects on the Neelam and Jhelum rivers posed a serious threat to environment in the region. Environmentalists say that the dams in the region are damaging water sources, causing an acute shortage of water for locals. Because जानों के जो है ऊपर हमारी जिंदगियों के ऊपर उसका सौदा करके हमारे हुक्मरानों ने हमारा जो दरिया जेलम है उसको भी जो है वो वाबड़ा के और चाइना के हाथों फ्रोट कर दिया है जब वो दरिया भी बंद हो जाएगा तो इस शहर का जो टेंपरेचर है वो बढ़ जाएगा द पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन द इलीगली ऑक्युपाइड रीजन लेफ्ट द रीजन डाउन ट्रोडन एंड अंडर डेवलप्ड फॉर डेकेड्स नाउ इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम अफगानिस्तान the Taliban, while raising objection over the Afghan government's move to convene a Loya Jirga, a grand assembly of elders to decide on the fate of 400 prisoners, has called it illegal. The militant group said all factions should avoid such obstacles in the way of the peace process. The Taliban has said the Afghan government's move to convene a Loya Zirka, a grand assembly of elders, about the fate of 400 prisoners, has no legal grounds and that all factions should avoid creating obstacles in the way of the Afghan peace process. The Taliban in a statement on Wednesday said, as Afghanistan is in dire need of peace and intra-Afghan negotiations following the agreement terminating the occupation of Afghanistan, 
it is imperative that all sides understand the need of this time and refrain from creating obstacles for the present opportunity. Meanwhile, officials of the Loya Zirga Organizing Committee has said that the government will only seek suggestions for the fate of the 400 Taliban prisoners from the Loya Zirga and will not be authorized to pardon prisoners when it comes to their release. This comes as Afghan President Ashraf Ghani last week confirmed that the government had released 4,600 Taliban prisoners out of the 5,000 pledged in an agreement signed in February by the United States and the Taliban. But he said he had no authority under the country's constitution to release the remaining 400 inmates on the Taliban's list because of their involvement in serious crimes. Ghani then announced he would summon a consultative Loya Zirga to decide the fate of the remaining 400 prisoners on the Taliban's list. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal government has reintroduced Ortevin scheme of vehicle rationing scheme in several districts including Kathmandu Valley where more than 200 cases of coronavirus have been reported. The Himalayan nation has so far reported 21,390 coronavirus cases which includes 60 deaths and 15,156 recovery cases. Nepali government has once again decided to restrict public and vehicular movements starting from Thursday following a sharp increase in COVID-19 infections across the country. The government reintroduced odd-even system of vehicle rationing scheme for public and private vehicles plying inside Kathmandu Valley and other districts with more than 200 active cases, according to the Interior Ministry. The ministry has also barred vehicular and public movements from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Nepal's government lifted the four-month-long lockdown on July 21. Since then, COVID-19 cases have been soaring in Kathmandu Valley. With the rising number of COVID-19 cases, the government has now enforced partial lockdown in various parts of the country. The Interior Ministry on Wednesday afternoon released a list of 14 districts which will be kept under partial to full lockdown as cases of coronavirus infection and fatalities continue to soar. As per the issued list, a total of six districts will be facing a complete restriction in movement while eight would remain under partial lockdown. As of Thursday, Nepal has reported 21,390 coronavirus cases. These include 60 deaths and 15,156 recovered cases. In the extraordinary times amid the coronavirus pandemic, an Indian businessman has converted his office space into a coronavirus ward facility in western Surat city. The rising number of cases in Surat prompted the businessman to donate the space. A businessman in India's western Surat city has converted his office into a COVID-19 facility for the treatment of the poor and needy for free of cost. Kader Sheikh's brother contracted the deadly coronavirus and had to spend a lot of money for the treatment at a private clinic. Sheikh then decided to convert his office into a COVID-19 hospital in the city to provide free treatment to the virus patients. 84 beds are almost 100 beds, but in 84 beds are 74 beds are oxygen and 10 beds are ventilator with ICU. From Wednesday, India entered Unlock 3.0, which is the third phase of easing lockdown restrictions in the country. The centre has now ended night curfew and even interstate travel is freely permitted. However, the state governments are allowed to assess the spread of coronavirus and formulate policies accordingly. In line with this, several states have decided to continue strict lockdown till August 31 and have imposed travel restrictions. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.